Finally, the government AIDS officials admit that HIV, the so-called AIDS virus, is not present in some AIDS patients, which lends credibility to scientists such as Dr. Peter Duesberg, who has long argued that the HIV infection does not cause AIDS. If it did, it would have to be present in all cases. Since the official reports of patients who had AIDS but were not HIV positive, a growing number of other people are now questioning the medical establishment's continued insistence that HIV causes AIDS. But does that mean the official AIDS establishment is backing away from the theory that HIV, the so-called AIDS virus, is the cause of AIDS? Not if an op-ed piece in the New York Times by a prominent establishment scientist is any indication. Dr. Jerome Groupman attacked dissenters such as Dr. Harvey Bialy, my guest on this program, and hundreds of other scientists worldwide who call themselves the Group for the Scientific Reappraisal of the HIV AIDS Hypothesis, and says that their dissent simply diverts the focus from effective drugs and treatment. But does it? For example, because of the new debate, we now know that the so-called AIDS test actually tests for HIV antibodies, not the virus itself. Furthermore, the presence of antibodies is generally evidence that the body has neutralized the infection. Of the one million Americans believed to be HIV positive, only 3% will develop AIDS, while 75% of hemophiliacs have been exposed to HIV-infected blood, there is no change in their death rate. Has the prevailing theory that HIV alone causes AIDS, instead of leading to a cure, unleashed a fraudulent heterosexual AIDS epidemic, promoted discrimination and violence against gays, and destroyed relationships and marriages? I'm Tony Brown. In a moment, AIDS without HIV. My guest on this program is Dr. Harvey Bialy. Dr. Bialy is a molecular biologist and editor of the magazine Rethinking AIDS.